What's up comic and pop culture fans? This is James with Mint Hunter Comics. I thought I'd make a special video talking about everything I've learned from the last few years of submitting. Let's start it off with those everyday, regular, modern books, meaning books from after 1975. Number one, always clean and press. A lot of people hit up my Instagram or email saying, hey James, do you think I should get this pressed? Yes, yes I do. Number two, third-party pressers often will do a better job than in-house with CGC and CBCS, although admittedly I was pretty darn impressed with CBCS's in-house presser, I have to say. These third-party guys that you go with, usually they'll do a couple passes, where some of these in-house places they'll only do one press where some books need a lot more tension than that. If sending to CBCS, you will need to remember to actually select the press button for each new book you enter. Unlike CGC, it doesn't autofill, so every new book that you want pressed, you have to actually mark press. CBCS has a new category called New Books, which is from 2001 up. It's to further distinguish moderns, which means anything from above 1975 to today, and it is a little bit cheaper than a modern submission. For the modern tier CGC submissions, anything over $400 is going to get bumped into a new category. So don't think you can squeeze in an ASM 300 or a New Mutants 98. CGC might send you straight to standard or even an express tier for books like that. So make sure you have an idea of the value before you submit these books in. Submit similar decades. Bet you haven't heard that one before. So I, my most successful submissions is when I submit 90s books with 90s books, 80s books with 80s books, 70s books with 70s books, 2000s books, you get where I'm coming from. CBCS, that doesn't seem to be a problem, but with CGC, it seems to be that you want a similar paper style, you want a similar stock, you want that similar type of book being submitted at the same time. I don't know why. Pay attention. Never submit the same book in a same submission if you don't think it's basically perfect. If they're golden, gorgeous copies, you could probably go ahead with it. But if you're sending in a couple copies of the same book and one of them's maybe a little bit worse than the other, don't send them in at the same time. I can't tell you why this has happened, but it's happened to me about 20 different occasions. They tend to both end up getting the same grade. I've seen people in the comments start saying it's happening to them too. I don't know what's up with that. Number eight, include a sticky note or a piece of paper or something on the actual bag of the comic if you want CGC to note the key notes of it. If it's kind of a minor first appearance and maybe it doesn't mention the character on the label yet, you can ask them to include it. They'll have to verify it and chances are they'll probably ignore it, but I've had some major successes getting notes updated this way. On that same note, CBCS has a significantly better accounting for the key notes. A lot of times you just don't have to ask CBCS to update the notes because on their labels it will say the first appearance of whatever. CGC. It's a little more of an uphill battle getting them to update those. Never send books to CGC or CBCS with tape anywhere near on them. Make sure when you've got a book, it's open at the top and preferably the flap leading over onto the front instead of the flap leading to the back. This lets the book just slide out of there and it's just less hands, less handling for these books. You can send books with quality issues, cracked scuffing, certain things that you need CGC to fix. You can send them as a mechanical error and you can piggyback your modern and other submissions in with it if you both put them all in the same box. They'll pay for the shipping to get their screw up fixed and you can put your next submission in there as well and save on shipping down to Florida. At least for DC, 90s books, a lot of the second and third prints and more are actually more valuable than the first print. Missing tattoos and ads will result in a green label which the collector's community has deemed a little bit unfortunate. You might have a hard time selling that. Dog ears, polybag bends, popped staples, and non-verified via pedigree store stamps. Those are particular flaws which you can get railed for. Make sure you inspect your books before you send them. CBCS will denote a newsstand edition versus a direct edition. They'll also mention a rare UPC like the DC Universe Universe logo variant, whereas CGC it won't make any mention of that except for very specific situations. A lot of the 70s and 80s books have hidden imperfections that can hurt the grade on the interior. 
especially Marvel, sometimes had really weird paper in which it looks like there's almost like little tiny holes, look like a tiny little mouse got to the comic or something. Open up those pages, make sure that's not there, that could hurt your grade. Any certificate of authentication, uh, wizard certifications, posters, cards that came with the comic when they get graded, they should come back to you, but they don't always. I've definitely had them come back to me, and I've had some submissions where it's like, hey, wasn't there a poster in the back of the book? I never got it back. So just be aware that you might not get it back if you send it in. Don't forget about the bill. Uh, yeah, some of these are gonna get graded three, six, nine, 10, 12, 15 months later, and it's gonna hit your credit card when you least expect it. So just be ready and leave room on your debit and credit cards for when that hit inevitably comes. Speaking of bill, this is a little bit of an unfortunate one, but never lose your invoices. Keep all your paperwork. I hate to say this, but probably more than 10. Dude, maybe even more than 15 times I have had to call CGC's customer service about getting double charged one time. Um, a lot of times I'll send in books for a pre-screen and only 20 out of 25 will get graded, but I got charged for all 25 books. Just keep the bill, check the bank statements, call if there's an issue. Speaking of pre-screen, with CVCS you can send any number of books and you can set the minimum grade that you want. If you don't want them to grade it, if it's not at least an 8.0, you can set a pre-screen to 8.0, they won't grade it. With CGC, you have to send in at least 25 books in order to set a pre-screen to whatever you want. And for the next tier, the economy tier, which is books from before 1975, always clean and press. You're gonna hear this from me a couple times. It is considerably more expensive, so plan accordingly. Despite it being much more expensive, you still can't get away with comics valued over $400. They'll slip you into the standard or express tier if you're not careful. Same exact rule as the modern for these economies here. If it's above or nearing the like $1,000 mark, you're better off sending it over to standard. Next up, have an idea of what you think the book can get. If you've got an ASM 252, that's a book where a 9.6 is like $400, but a 9.8 is like $2,000. So if you actually get the 9.8, you might be looking at a more expensive grading. I wish it wasn't that way, but it is, so I'm sharing it with you. If you think it can actually get in the 9.8, I recommend putting that in a standard, maybe even express tier for a book like that. Probably one of the most important things about the economy standard and express tiers is they grade these older books to the same standard as modern books. A lot of people think that because it's a little bit older, they're gonna be more lenient. That is not the case. They're gonna judge that book just like they would any other book. So maybe tell yourself to prepare for a slightly lower grade than what you might've been anticipating. Next up, prepare to see a lot of off-white and off-white to white. Before 1975, you're not gonna see a lot of white pages on these. These books are pretty old. They've probably been stored, maybe weirdly, for the past few decades. It is far more common, especially lately, that you're gonna see more and more off-white to white. Next up, currently, economy tier is taking considerably longer than moderns. Someone did tell me why, but I couldn't verify it, so I'm not gonna include the why in the video. Just know that I have three submissions of at least 15 books a pop that are considerably over a year old. They're getting kind of old now, and there's still no update. Whereas Moderns actually just had an update where with CGC, they're starting to come back really fast, actually, like almost faster than they were three years ago. Here's one no one likes to hear. For these economy classes, where it's taken a long time, some of the great pressing job that you might have done could disappear. It might be worth it to spend on the fast track to get these books done faster so that the results of your pressing don't fade a little bit. CBCS cases are ever so slightly clearer and a bit more sturdy. For those reasons, my personal preference I've found is I like getting anything from before like 1980 in these. For some reason, I like seeing early bronze and silver slabs in CBCS cases. Just a personal preference. Comic reholdering. CVCS will reholder any damaged or any book that you just want to get in new plastic. It's gonna cost you 12 bucks. CGC, it costs $20. And if it's a more higher value book, it's gonna cost you $50. It's a bit of a racket, don't get me started. This one's a little obvious, but make sure you are taking these books out of the bag and actually looking at them. Books always look much better in the bag. Get them out, check them out before you send them. 
CGC's graders notes are now free, one of the better updates CGC has had in recent years, and there's a QR code on the back now that you can scan and find the graders notes for books. I've had eight fives. I've actually seen CGC 7.0s with no graders notes, so just be aware that it might not be there every time. And at least where CGC is concerned, the standard section, which is books valued up to a thousand dollars, Always clean and press again. It's a little repetitive, but I gotta say it. Next up, it is much, much more expensive, so plan accordingly. This is where CBCS definitely gets a win because CBCS has a vintage tier that it goes up to $1,000 and it's like 40 bucks to get that done. For anything getting close to $1,000, you have to put it in CGC's standard tier, which is considerably more expensive. CBCS books from the Silver Age particularly have a sharp percentage drop in final sales value. It's just true. People are more comfortable with CGC. CBCS, while I at times think it's the better company, they, the same exact grade will sell for more with CGC. If you think your book is from a pedigree, you can mark it as a pedigree when you send it in. Not guaranteed that they're going to actually put it in the pedigree uh, label for you, but if it gets verified, you get it. And if not, you still get the blue label. This, is, this next one's an important one. I saw online a couple people say don't submit the same tiers together. I completely disagree. I always send like five standards with 10 economies with maybe like 25 moderns. They're all in separate batches and I stick them in the same box and I ship them out. You save on shipping. Not really sure why people have said not to do this. I've submitted thousands of books to both CGC and CBCS and it always makes more sense to do it that way. This is important. Old CGC slabs were graded more leniently, but they were judged more harshly on page quality. So you might see like a CGC 7.0, you get it pressed and regraded and suddenly it's a 6.0, a grade drop, but maybe it had off white pages before and now it has white pages. They were more lenient back then. And I think one of the reasons is maybe the Edgar Church collection came along and just boosted up the standard that we have to hold comics to. Comics are judged a little bit more harshly than they were like 15 years ago, so beware. Let's talk about the walkthrough and express. These are the really big boy submissions. I don't know if you've heard this, but you always want to clean and press. Be aware that the walkthrough and the express tiers are outrageously expensive, so you really need to save for this one. I recommend only sending in the crazy big books for these tiers. CBCS has a Vintage Plus tier, which is kind of the same thing. It's for books up to a $5,000 value, and then a premium tier for anything over, which is basically the same as CGC's walkthrough tier. Always check these books for restoration and missing pieces. You might have shelled out a ton of money for a disappointing grade or color label. And how about now for magazine tier submitting? Always clean and press. CGC magazine labels feel kind of weird and ever so slightly a little more loose, not so tight, uh, a little more fragile. So just beware. So handle them with care. Magazines take a hilariously long amount of time. I think I'm at 16 months for one of my magazine tiers, maybe 17. It's actually possible that it's even 18. <laughs> oh my God. It's true though. You can do magazine standard, modern, express, just like with comic books, it's the same thing. And finally, some advice for signed books. Always clean and press again. Whether submitting books in for signing with a CGC or a CBCS witnessed verification program, use the yellow window bag that CGC actually sells on their site. I love this thing, it's great. And I even use it when I submit the CBCS. Already signed books will receive a green label from CGC, not yellow. Bet you didn't know this one, I just learned this. Already signed books where the signing took place in the interior of the book, apparently CGC will still give you a blue label, not the green. If sending, oh, this is so important. If you're sending an already slabbed book, always clean and press. If you don't clean and press your already slabbed book, you could definitely be looking at a grade dip. It's happened to me at this point many times with signatures. Next up, CBCS will double check non-witnessed books, meaning books that were already signed, and if they can verify the signature, you're gonna get the yellow label. 
This is everyone's favorite program right now in terms of submitting their old comics that were signed by maybe Stan Lee or whomever. Send it to CBCS. You can get it verified and get it graded. You can send it to CGC. It's going to get the green label. There are definitely some little things to note um, that come from experience, and a lot of this you're going to learn for yourself. A lot of things you're going to learn that aren't on this list. There are little things you can do to ensure the safety and a good grade out of your book. My personal preference has been lately CBCS. I do feel that CGC has had some significant quality control issues. That's not to say they're not working on it very hard and working to make sure all that is gone for the upcoming year. As always, guys, keep on hunting.